Facebook. Hey, hopefully I'm uh, not sideways tonight. I have some other people helping me on my issues with uh, my videos being sideways lately. My phone's exactly the same way it always has been, but I've been having a little bit of trouble with that. I have a million projects going on, and I have a million that I'm excited to share with you, too. So, I wanted to sort of come live tonight and gauge a little bit of interest in what of those projects that there may be the most interest in to make sure that we get to the coolest, funnest ones first, but uh, our most fun ones. I did want to say, because I know it seemed probably a little cryptic or odd in the if you received one of the notifications and in the thing here about the Facebook jail, if you don't uh, have a business where you're online a lot and doing live videos on Facebook, you may not have ever even heard of Facebook jail, but Facebook jail is a real thing. And a lot of my uh, friends in the, in the same industry that I am, creative entrepreneurs and people like that, have been, uh, and business people, have been placed in Facebook jail. And what that is is Facebook punishes you and locks you out of your account for a matter of time, usually three days, but it can be 10 days and it can be longer if you do things that uh, that they don't like to have done. And right now, what uh, whenever y'all get a notification from me, if you've signed up under the Facebook alerts, that's through a comp that's called a bot. And that's through a company called ManyChat, which was approved by Facebook, or I would have never done it. And But that's what, you know, you sign up through saying alerts, and then whenever I want to send y'all a message telling you when I'm going live to alert you, I go to the ManyChat and do what's called a broadcast to send you the message to tell you that I'm going to go live. Well... Now, uh, Facebook has their own, and they don't want you to use ManyChat anymore. They want you to do it through them, but they only approve you to do it through them if you sign up for something called a subscription service through them. And I do plan on having a subscription group after the first of the year, so if it is something you think you would be interested in, just let me know that uh, in the comments. That would be great. Just say interested in subscription or something like that if you think you would be interested in a subscription group because I may not be able to do the notifications if we don't have a subscription group and I'm sure that you know tweaks and things will be you know made to that over time with Facebook but you know as of right now we're just a, a regular business page and I'm just doing crafty things and sharing that with my friends but i uh, Anyway, until I can see whether we would qualify as a subscription group and whether that would work out, I won't be able to send the notifications, but I think that the way that we can work around that is by creating what Facebook calls events. So if we, what we're going to discuss tonight is a bunch of the projects that I have uh, ready to start, things that I'm going to work on. I want to work on the prototypes first and then bring them to you and, and let you make a decision whether or not we should do an event. And then it would, and then I will create an event on the page and hopefully you know if there's any interest then Facebook will share that with the people who have liked the page and uh, if you're interested you'll be able to say interested or going or you know or whatever and you'll be able to uh, get the note get the notifications through Facebook to attend the event so some of the events that we may have some of the projects that I've been working on and uh, is me open this one. This is a hat. I bought uh, several of these on Amazon because I wanted the distressed looking hats. I painted a sunflower on one the other day. My husband painted a little Snoopy on one. He didn't realize that you can't do licensed things. But anyways, if y'all are interested in painting hats, there's a couple of ways to do that. Let me know you're interested in painting hats and I'll create a supply list and create us an event for this. But there's two ways to do it. There's one, and a lot of my friends are doing this and I'm anxious to try it. So if you would be anxious to try it, let me know. But they're using the DIY clay-based paint and just painting directly on here, whatever it is that they want to paint, a, a cow or a chicken or a truck or a flower or, or whatever. I have different friends painting different things and uh, then they just chunk it in the dryer to heat set it and boom it's painted I don't know how they wash nobody has said yet well I, I had been taught in the old school way of painting fabric that you use something called uh, 
Oh my goodness, this is big. This is fabric painting medium, and you would never need a gallon of this. This was like $150. I got that because I was painting some chairs, also which you can paint with DIY, but I didn't have DIY at the time, and I was wanting to use paint from Sherwin-Williams. But they make that stuff, fabric medium, in a little bitty jar like this. This is Mod Podge. But just, you know, now in Hobby Lobby, maybe in Walmart or whatever, you should be able to go where the craft paints are, the little liquidy ones like this, and, uh, and find one that says textile medium or fabric painting medium. And what that does is you mix it with the regular acrylic paint, the paints that we bought already that, uh, that we've used in other projects like this. I always have some in my wet palette. Uh, if you're using the paints from the tubes or the paints from the little bottles, you would mix uh, like one third of this liquid to two thirds of the liquid or half and half. It just depends on whatever the label says on the one that you get that lights run on me and you would mix that and it not only extends the drying time or, or the working time I guess you should say of the paint and that way you can use the paints that you have already it uh, but it sinks into the fabric and makes it softer and uh, more able to be used and you know able to be washed in the washing machine and, and all those kind of things so if you're interested in in doing hats say interested in hats and if you're interested in doing them with like the diy clay based paint say diy paint I'm, i am anxious to try that i really am but you would need to have two or three colors of it um depending on what you were wanting to paint and if you have an idea, tell me that too. But you would need to go and get yourself some textile medium or some fabric medium to go with your acrylic paints and and a hat. And order yourself a hat or buy it at Walmart or wherever. And so that's one option. Another option, and this is uh, one that I'm working on here, and I'm not happy with this. Not, not pleased at all to show it to you, but I was working on this during a football game in my husband's man cave, and I was using the acrylic paints that I already had in my uh, wet palette from painting the hat, and uh, I bought these aprons to paint. And I don't know exactly what, I, what I'm gonna do on here. These are gonna be uh, sunflowers whenever it's through. But right now, they're not very bright because I do have a black apron. They're not very bright, but it's not too stiff. And I know this would be washable because I did mix my acrylic paints with the fabric painting me uh, medium. But what I didn't think about ahead of time is there's sizing which is something that makes the stiffness in, in new fabrics and things like that on these. And it made it very difficult for the, uh, the paint wanted to bubble up sort of on the surface rather than sink in, even though I was using the textile medium. And uh, I put an old canvas, one of the uh, backgrounds when I was trying out new colors behind it, and then this paper over that, and you could see that a little bit of that still came through because I was using a good bit of textile medium. But what I will try and have an answer for you for, if you want to paint aprons and just write, hey, I'd like to try painting aprons on there, and I... Uh, and whether you would want to try it with the DIY paint, same thing, or whether you want to apply it with the, uh, the textile medium and the acrylic paints that you have already, let me know that. But I am going to recommend that if you just buy a, an apron, that you wash it and dry it first to get that sizing out to make it easier to paint on because it'll want to absorb more paint. So I'm kind of excited about, uh, about painting an apron too, and it doesn't have to have... I, I wanted to paint roses and stuff on them, but anyways, I started that one out to see how it would go with uh, sunflowers. Another project that's really popular right now, I've been sharing a good bit, and I've worked on uh, on a few that have mostly already sold from my store, but are pumpkins. These are on sale at Michael's right now. There's not a Michael's near me, but they're, uh, that light is still just hitting it wrong. Where I, I know y'all can't see it good. Uh, let's see if I can turn it around that way. There you go. These are just cream color. This one is, I believe, a nine inch. They came in these plastic bags. They came in through the mail yesterday because there's not a Michaels within an hour of me. And, uh, and I got this 13 inch, the oblong one, which I'm absolutely in love with. Well, 
one of my uh, mentors, uh, Amanda Hilburn, is painting some cute stuff on, on pumpkins. And, and I would like to try to paint some. This one's flawed a little bit, but that's not going to matter. And I would like to do that, too. And I was thinking of, of painting roses or flowers or, or I was just calling them country pumpkin pumpkins because I am, uh, I do like to paint, you know, chickens and cows and and you know farm animals but I also love to paint flowers and things like that we could do this with a fall scene of sunflowers we could do it with a, a church or a, or a landscape theme or we could do it with an animal on there you know a kind of a cutesy you know goat or cow or chicken or something like that but um i would if y'all are interested in this i'll go ahead and get uh uh, prototype painted up and see how that would go. Amanda does hers with a palette knife because that's uh, she's a, a really good palette knife painter. I would probably do it with the acrylic paints that we bought already for some of the other projects and uh, just a brush. If you want to do this project well like the other one you're going to need to get an apron if you want to do an apron project. If you uh, want to do the pumpkin project get either you can do it any size. It, uh, these are, like I said, are two different nine inch. This is a squatty one. See how squatty this is next to this? And then this is a medium size, just a regular round pumpkin. And then this is an oblong 13 inch tall one. You can get a six inch, a nine inch, whatever size pumpkin you want to. But if the, you know, they charge more for these, uh, these lighter color ones. So you could get just whatever cheap one you have already in the attic or go get something wherever. Or if you live near a Michaels, these are 70% off. I think I paid 12 bucks for this one and it's regular 30. I would never have paid 30 for it. But anyway, uh, go ahead and just get you tape up this little doomy bob on top with some tape and spray paint it. That's absolutely fine. Just go get you some uh, cream color spray paint or use one of your brushes and the paint we have already. Just paint them an off-white color to start with. If that's the color you want to start with, you can do it on the orange one. You can do it on a teal one, a green one, anything that is going to match your decor and make you proud of yourself for working on one. So if you're interested in pumpkin painting with a cute scene on it, these will be definitely different than any of the ones we've done before then uh say pumpkin project and go ahead and go and get yourself a pumpkin and get the base of it painted to whatever color you want your background to be another uh set of projects that we're going to be working on are canvases and i splurged this time and that's i don't do that very often uh Michaels also had uh, their canvases all at 70% off, so that, that leaves these being like a dollar a piece. This is a set of 10, I think, 10 pieces, and I usually don't do very much on small canvases, but I've seen where people are stacking two or three around, like a, above their mantle of their fireplace or in their windows, or even even make, using them in wreaths and on you know in part of their Christmas tree decor and things like that. And it's it's really some cute stuff. So I decided to order some smaller canvases and try my hand at working smaller. So I would love to share that with you. I mean, there's only so much wall space for 16 by 20s and we know I got a honey load of them around here. Uh, so I, these are eight by tens. And like I said, this was 10 for, I think with my discount, it was nine bucks, 10 for nine bucks. So that's 90 cents piece. I splurged on these. And I'm so proud of them already. These are these are ten by tens, but they're what uh, Michael's called level three, uh, and they were more expensive. But at seventy percent off, I think I paid four dollars and something a piece for them, and that's just really not bad because look how thick that is. This is going to look beautiful on someone's mantle, and I got. Uh, I got four of the 10 by 10s. They had 12 by 12s, and I have so many 12 by 12s in the cheaper packs that I didn't get them in this, and I, I should have, but my bill was already way up there. I, I'm kidding you not. Uh, but anyway, so I, I got some square ones. So whether you get six by six, eight by eight, 10 by 10, 12 by 12, whatever you want to get and whatever's within your price range, uh, I decided, look how well this looks so well made in back it's just gonna be nice to paint something on a really high quality canvas too 
but not that I'm not going to use the hay out of the ones that cost me 90 cents a piece because I am. Uh, but anyway, so we're going to do some square pieces. And what I have in mind for these are like uh, nativity scenes, baby Jesus, the manger, the, you know, maybe an angel or an old church house. Something that, that we can use for Christmas decor. So, uh, if you're interested in participating, and we'll use a palette knife for some of that, our, real, our regular acrylic paints that we bought already, just make sure you have the colors that you would like. I'll probably do more subdued colors on these instead of bright colors. Um, so, make sure you have, like, uh, black and white, of course, but make sure you have raw umber and burnt umber and raw sienna and burnt sienna and... Uh, you know, we can go lighter and darker with that. Maybe get a unbleached titanium to have a cream color. And we'll go with those. But the, So if you're wanting to participate in the canvas paintings uh, with a palette knife and with a brush to do some Christmas paintings, we have those. I also got some four of 9 by 12s And I'll probably do the same thing. More Christmas paintings, more you know, angels and uh, nativity scenes and Christmas things. But we also have the option of, and I'll probably do that on some of the larger ones. I did get, this is a seven piece set of 12 by 12s and these are the less expensive, but they're still nice, uh, high quality uh, canvases. And we'll maybe do things like if you're, whatever the themes are that there's any interest shown in if you let me know of the interest that you have we'll work on that we could do more buffalo plaid we could do christmas trees we could do uh oh i don't know in ornaments and then you know put the grandkids names on the ornaments we could do you know more of the not the traditional spiritual religious christmas theme but the more family oriented not exactly santa claus but maybe santa claus if that's what they're interested in but more traditional christmasy looking joyous occasion type things then that will also be your uh square ones so whatever you get in the depending on how many you want to do and how many we do here maybe at least get three or four squares so whether you do 10 by 10s or 12 by 12s it absolutely doesn't matter uh, get you three or four of them if you're wanting to do three or four projects. And the last thing I got was, and I've not used these before. These are six by sixes. I have some four by fours, but I've not used six by sixes. But they, they're a nice, uh, thick canvas and would be a, another cute thing just to do something small on and these would look good hanging on the tree in the wreath sitting on the mantel sitting under the tree these are small enough to go on the coffee table in a centerpiece and we can do these in any kind of thing when you're interested and if you're interested in doing um, something with the small ones just say uh, tiny canvas or tiny square and then I'll know that's what you mean and you can get these in the four by fours or six by sixes whatever you find and and they may have that at Walmart for all I know or where whatever store is close to you if you live in a larger city that may have a larger selection you'll be able to get those from there so just let me know in the comments whether you are interested in hat painting and whether you would be interested in doing it with DIY clay base or acrylics apron painting DIY or acrylics um, pumpkin painting go ahead and get a pumpkin and get it painted to the base color that you want if you're interested in that one because i'm going to do that one anyway and then i'm going to do some of the palette knop the christmas ones too but it would be you know more fun if more of us do that together so let me know the kind of you know the religious christmas theme the manger baby jesus you know the top of angels the type of things that you would be interested in in painting those or whether you want to do something bright and colorful and you know whatever color matches your christmas decorating theme for this year 
and we can do fall scenes whatever whatever it is that you want but just uh know that i'm afraid to send any more of the alerts until facebook says that i can so hopefully you got this one and i'm going to get through with this live and not be in facebook jail and believe me that i'm working it on it if you think you would be interested in a, a subscription group let me know and the way those work is you pay a monthly fee to be in the group and then you receive, you know, some content, something to do, a craft or a project every single week for free that's just for the people who are in the group. So you can, you know, have a group of camaraderie of friends to work together and things like that and more access to me and asking questions and posting our projects in there. And it would not be a public group that everybody would be able to, but then I would be able to send alerts and, uh, and send more detailed projects and things in there. But like I said, I'm gonna be working on some prototypes and I wanna make sure that I work on uh, the things that you're most interested in and then I'll be creating events for those so that you'll know when they are happening and hopefully Facebook will send them out and we can join in together and have a girls night in making something cool and fun and uh, creative together. I appreciate you joining me, and I look forward to reading your comments, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.